Hi, everybody, and welcome back to SDRTK. Hope you're having a great week. Today, I'm going to take a look at a brand new set of reference headphones from Sennheiser. They're the HD 400 Pros. And as usual, this review isn't going to be about me sitting here saying, hey, guys, these are great. You got to get them. I let them run in overnight with a variety of program material. And I've been using them for about 20 hours for a variety of general listening, mixing, as well as some light gaming because I wanted to get an idea of my impression before I actually went ahead and ran the tests. And so in this video, I will roll back the clock. I'll unbox the headphones for you. Then we'll get into the audio tests and we're gonna use a sine sweep from 20 to 20,000 Hertz, some music programming, as well as some spoken word. We'll compare direct recordings against recordings made through the HD 400s. And then I'll use both linear and log frequency analysis to give you an idea of what you can expect to hear from these headphones. After that, I'll give you my thoughts on general listening, mixing, as well as light gaming with these headphones, again, based on the tests and my experience with them so far. After that, I'll briefly go through the features and specs. I'll talk about the build quality and give you my final thoughts. Okay, so let's go ahead and unbox these headphones. As you can see on the back, Sennheiser is appealing to a certain crowd. There's a DAW and an interface, so it gives you an idea of where they're going with this. And I have high expectations for this, of course, being a Sennheiser product. I, uh, I do expect them to perform very well, but uh, we'll see how it goes with the tests. So just uh, getting the box open here uh, inside, I mean, we have some reasonable packaging. You know, the money is going to be spent on the headphones themselves, not on elaborate inserts and otherwise. We, we know what Sennheiser is all about. So let's open everything up here. Inside, I see a few things. We do have, of course, uh, some instructions. So we'll get them there, put the box out of the way. And uh, then we'll we'll get into the uh, headphones themselves. So uh, instruction book is going to be you know multi language and have some information you may find helpful. Now I'll go ahead and open up this uh, this cable, and I can see already there's an adapter for uh, for three three point five millimeter to a quarter inch on there. So you get an adapter. It's a thread on. It's a really good feeling cable. Uh, it seems like high quality. You do get a straight cable as well. So uh, that's uh, nice to see. We get a choice for two. It's a replaceable cable on these headphones, which is again, what I would expect from Sennheiser in a headphone of this quality. I'll go ahead and pull the headphones themselves out of this plastic. And, uh, they uh, appear to be, of course, in pristine condition, again, as I would expect. Um, good feel, they're lightweight. Pads are nice and soft. Uh, feels pretty sturdy when I open and close this. It's, uh, there's a lot of plastic construction here, again, to keep the weight down. Of course, an open back design, but uh, yeah, very soft, nice feeling headphones right off the bat. Locking uh, cables, so you can put that in and out. You can use either the coiled again or the straight cable. So uh, everything is as I would expect to see it uh, out of the box. Now we'll get into the audio tests. And because you can't try these on through the video, I'm going to do my best to give you an idea of what you can expect to hear. And we'll start out with a sine wave sweep recorded directly into the Focusrite Scarlet 8i6. Now we'll record the sine wave sweep through the HD 400 Pros using the AKG P170. So now we're looking at the linear comparison of the 20 to 20,000 Hertz sweep. And you can see that the uh, HD 400s do have a bit of a roll off in the high frequency sound pressure. But again, we'll take a look at the log comparison because that'll give us a better idea of the overall tuning with the headphones of what we'd expect to hear. And now we're taking a look at the log comparison of the sine sweep. And you can see that it would appear that some of the very lowest frequencies and the very highest frequencies are a bit underrepresented by the HD 400 Pros. I can tell you that I don't sense that in my own hearing. And of course, the sine sweep is going to be a lot different in terms of the perception versus a music and or spoken word, more complicated program material. But it is interesting to note that that's the way the uh, log interpretation is of the sine sweep. Okay, now we'll record the music sample through the HD 400 Pros using the AKG P170.
Okay, and now we're looking at a linear comparison of the music recording both direct and through the HD 400 Pros. And you can see here that on a linear basis, it would appear that some of the high frequencies are underrepresented here again. Of course, the way we hear it is going to be very different based on the tuning of the headphone cavity, the drive replacement, and also our ears. And that's why it's going to be a little bit different for everyone. But the log approach will give us a better idea of what you can expect to hear. So let's check that out. Okay, and now we have the log comparison up. And you can see that the recording through the HD 400, the shape of this profile is very faithful versus the original recording. And Sennheiser talks about these as being reference headphones. And so what I'm looking for is a true reproduction of the actual music file. And uh, I mean, it's, it's not perfect, of course. There's a little bit of uh, variance, especially in the high frequencies. But, you know, within the accuracy of, of these tests, I would say that this is, a, this is an excellent comparison, an excellent representation of the direct file. And for the spoken word test, let's start out with the direct recording. This is a spoken word sample, so we can hear the difference of my voice recorded directly versus my voice recorded through the HD 400 Pros. And now we'll go ahead and listen to the spoken word sample recorded through the HD 400 Pros. This is a spoken word sample, so we can hear the difference of my voice recorded directly versus my voice recorded through the HD 400 Pros. And here we have the linear comparison of the spoken word direct recording versus that recorded through the HD 400 Pro. And looking at the linear results, it would appear again that we're missing some information up in the top area. It's at least underemphasized. Some uh, in kind of the mid lows, there's also a little bit missing. But once again, the tuning matters, so let's take a look at the log comparison. Okay, and finally, I have the log comparison of the direct recording of spoken word versus spoken word recorded through the HD 400 Pros. And I have to tell you that looking at this within the accuracy of these tests, this is a very, very accurate and true recording made through the headphones. This is uh, probably as good as I have seen for spoken word. So those of you that are thinking about using these to monitor for voiceover, uh, they are open back, so you know not, not the greatest to use while you're actually recording, but if you want to listen back after and get a really true representation of spoken word, these headphones will definitely do it. And while these are reference headphones really designed to give you a true reproduction of the sound, I know a lot of you like to use the same set of cans for gaming and for mixing, mastering, recording, streaming. So let's, uh, let's listen to some game audio. And before I get into the build quality and the features and specs, I'll tell you a little bit about what I think so far. Based on my experience, again, using these headphones for general listening, and I, I wore them for a long time. I actually wore them for about a six-hour session. They were very, very comfortable. I really wanted to try them out because they are open back. I wanted to see if they were going to be fatiguing at all, and they absolutely weren't. The music reproduction, again, some of the best that I have seen, certainly in this price range, far better than even what I would expect. You know, I'm comparing these to things like my DT880 Pros that uh, I, I, I trust to be very accurate headphones. This, uh, the 400s are excellent for that. Uh, and that, that rolls over right into mixing where, again, I listen to a variety of mixes on these headphones, some of my other headphones, as well as monitors. And I've got to say that the, uh, they're very honest. The, uh, the, the, the reproduction is very truthful for them. And then for gaming, you know what? They get the job done. I like using uh, headphones with surround sound with uh, spatial uh, for, for gaming purposes. So they're not that, but the sound is very clear. You can hear everything that's going on. So these are, uh, you know, can be a really good all purpose headphone, although they really do live up to that reference idea and are suitable for production. We'll take a quick look at the features and specs. These are a dynamic open back design headphones. So you have to be aware for that. If you were thinking about using them, you know, for monitoring, there is going to be headphone bleed with them. But they also have angle transducers, and Sennheiser says that that's going to reduce overall distortion and greatly improve the accuracy of the headphones. And I have to say, they I did find them to be very accurate. Now, they're 120-ohm impedance, so they're not a very high or very low impedance. 
most uh, interfaces uh, and, and portable devices will drive these without any problem. But uh, 120 ohm design certainly is enough that the motors in the transducers actually uh, can do a, a pretty good job with dynamics. Now, frequency response is 6 to 38,000 hertz at uh, negative 10 dB, so a very, very wide frequency range. Again, I would expect that for a set of reference headphones. Max SPL of 110 dB, again at 1 kilohertz. Total harmonic distortion less than 0.05%, again at 1 kilohertz. Nice velour ear pads. I got to say they're very comfortable. I really like the fact that they come with both a straight and a coiled cable. Uh, both have 3.5 millimeter with an adapter, of course, to quarter inch if you need that. And the weight is 240 grams. So they're very lightweight. You can wear them for a long time. And so let's talk a little bit about the build quality. Like I said, there is a lot of plastic here, but they do seem very solid. I'm not worried about them breaking. Some nice padding. There could be maybe a little more along the top here. I, I again didn't find them fatiguing, but just so you know, there isn't an overabundance of padding on the top. The ear pads, though, are very nice. They're a soft velour, very comfortable. They're an open back design, of course. Cables are great. Everything is really solid. They lock in and out of place, of course, so no issue with them coming out as you're using them. Uh, they are stepped, so you can, you know, get an idea of where they're supposed to be. They do adjust pretty easily, I will say, so... You know, they may move on you a little bit, but I didn't notice them uh, any issue with them slipping on my head. There's there's enough clamping force here that they hold in place. But again, the softness of the pads makes them fairly comfortable. So they're pretty solid that way. Quality overall, I would say, is very good on these. Uh, again, in the price point, keeping them lightweight. They do appear durable. Time will tell, of course. But uh, yeah, overall, what I would expect from Sennheiser, again, nice build quality. So let me give you my final thoughts on the headphones and who I think they're for. First of all, they're billed as reference headphones, and I have to say the sound reproduction to my ears is very accurate. The tests bear it out, but again, comparing them to some of my other uh, reference headphones that I use for mixing, particularly DT880 Pros, I also even compared them to the, uh, to the Audio-Technica M40Xs, another very neutral headphone, less expensive than these certainly, but um, I tend to use a variety of headphones in addition to the monitors just to check my, uh, check my mixes. So from a mixing point of view, really accurate reproduction. Got to say you can use them for that. General listening, they are not fatiguing at all. So even given that they, they give an accurate representation, you know, I find them very comfortable to listen to. They have good solid bass and, and, uh, and high reproduction, very adequate mid-tones. Um, you know, not, not fatiguing again to listen to it all for, for general listening. Spoken word reproduction is excellent again. So whether you're into audiobooks or you're wanting to use these for voiceover to actually check your voiceover recordings, they absolutely are going to get the job done for you. Gaming audio, I think, is reasonable with these. Again, they're not designed to be, uh, you know, to be multidimensional sound. So the open back design and that it does create a spaciousness but they don't have that surround sound features that many gaming headsets do. So again, probably not for professional gaming, but if you want to use these kind of as an all around purpose and you do some gaming, they'll get the job done for you. And so what I recommend these headphones, well, across a broad set of use cases, absolutely. Yes. At 250 us dollars at the time of this recording, I have to say they're some of the best performing reference headphones in that price point that I've tried. They absolutely keep up with my buyer dynamics and others that I've tested. So I have to say that they are, um, you know, they're an excellent headphone, not surprising from Sennheiser, a little bit surprising. You can do this well for this price. And if you're interested in audio and video gear for recording studio and streaming, check out one of the other videos on the screen. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.